commentary, please to take a moment to review the disclaimer on screen. Be advised that there is an, an inherent risk involved in trading the financial markets. You can refer to our website for, for further details, and if in doubt, please do contact a financial consultant. For Tuesday, the 27th of August 2019, we've got two high impact news scheduled uh, today. The first one being uh, was at 8 a.m. CET, and this referred to the German GDP quarter on quarter for Q2. And then at 4 p.m., we have the U.S. Conference Board Consumer Confidence for the period of August. With regards to the German GDP, uh, we do know that the figures uh, that GDP contracted by seasonally adjusted 0.1% on quarter in the three months to June 2019, following a 0.4% expansion in the previous period and matching uh, market expectations, which uh, a preliminary estimate has, sh has shown. Net external demand contributed, ne contributed negatively to the GDP, mainly due to the slump in exports, while fixed capital form formation in construction also declined. We did have, uh, from the previous uh, read, uh, reports, figure of a 0.4%. The forecast was at uh, zero, minus 0.1%. The figures that were actually released earlier today uh, was, as per the uh, forecast, at uh, minus 0.1%. And the reports that we've received since then uh, was that um, the weaker exports um, were the main uh, factor affecting uh, GDP uh, for Q2, but but um, they still did report a surplus um, in there. Um, in there, they did still uh, record a surplus. The the reasons uh, attributed for the uh, contraction or weaker exports was due to the uh, trade uh, ongoing uh, trade dispute between the U.S. and China, as well as a waning uh, foreign demand. What you didn't know is that the Federal Statistics Office confirmed a preliminary gross GDP contraction of that 0.1% quarter on quarter from April to June after that 0.4% expansion in the first three months of the year. We also do know that the outlook for the German, for the, for the German economy uh, remains uncertain, as sentiment sentiment indi indicators point to a, uh, a bumpy road ahead, and most economists expect another quarter of of contraction, which in theory would then uh, or in th technically would then be that the German economy is in a recession. Furthermore, it is stated that um, exports fell or more strongly than imports in the second quarter, which meant that tr net trade deducted 0.5% uh, points uh, from the overall economic expansion. And then we did actually uh, see uh, construction was also dragging uh, uh, on the GDP uh, numbers, falling by that 1% uh, on the quarter. Household uh, spending, state expenditure, and private sector investment in machinery and equipment all increased, but they were not strong enough uh, to counter the massive uh, drag on net trade. Despite the uh, mixed uh, numbers uh, for the economy um, in the first six months of the year, the German economy managed to rec to record a whopping um, record a budget surplus of 45.3 billion euros uh, from January to June, which represented a surplus of 2.7% of economic output. The uh, federal government recorded a surplus of 17.4, uh, 17.7 billion euros. Um, the 16 federal states recorded a surplus of 12.7 billion euros. Um, the municipalities, 7.1 billion and social security system 7.7 .7 billion euros. The IFL business uh, sentiment survey, which was released on Monday, uh, showed that the uh, business morale has deter deteriorated more than expected in August uh, to hit its lowest in nearly seven years, in a further sign that escalating trade disputes are pushing the German economy towards that recession. Um, the calendar adjusted year, yearly growth rate is uh, eased to 0.4% in the second quarter from 0.9% in, in, in the first quarter. So what we've got here is that um, we've, we, we are seeing um, the German economy not perform that, that well. And as, as we go through the, through the uh, technical uh, aspect of today's com commentary, when we look at the charts, we'll also be looking at what the central, the Bundesbank uh, president, Jens Weidmann, has actually said with regards to the German economy and the, East, and East, and the ECB's uh, quantitative easing or asset purchase, purchase program. And that in itself 
gives us a, gives us some indication as to potentially what the outlook could be uh, for Germany. But with the figures being released today, if we do see one more quarter of, of um, negative or below forecast figures for GDP numbers, then technically uh, Germany uh, can be described as being in, in a recession. As a result, um, the markets that we'll be looking at for, for the DAX will, will be the DAX um, primarily because that will give us a broader sense of what the state of uh, the state of the economy is for the German what the state of the German economy is. Um, moving over to the uh, next slide, which is the U.S. Conference Board Consumer Confidence uh, for the period of August, we'll be looking at the measure in the level of co consumer confidence in economic activity. Um, it's a leading indicator that as it can predict the consumer spending which plays a major role in economic um, in overall economic activity. We do know that the previous figure was set at uh, 135.7. The forecast is at 130.0. Definitely, uh, therefore, if we do get figures uh, at 130 or higher, that will be perceived as being very positive uh, for, the, for the dollar. We do know that the um, with last week's uh, in position of uh, tariffs between the uh, by China and the U.S. that rattled the market, particularly on during Monday trading, and as a result, we did see uh, a lot of the market sell off. So um, that will obviously play a key role, um, not necessarily in this particular report for today, but um, in the coming um, um, months ahead. If there is no sort of a resolution toward to towards the uh, trade dispute then it's very likely that the figures that we, do, we are seeing here in terms of consumer confidence will continue to decline as the market itself is unsure as to whether or not there, there is some sort of negoti negotiation on the table that will bring about some sort of uh, amicable resolution between uh, trade uh, between China and the US. So um, looking at today's data, very important to keep in the back of the mind of, of in the back of your mind, um, the figures that we, the reports that we have received last week, which rattled the market quite quite a bit, and then looking at what the number, what the actual number is. But from what we have seen over the last few, uh, since last week, and definitely over the last two years, um, this situation with regards to the uh, trade dispute is something that seems to be uh, ongoing and that in itself is co creating a great deal of um, uncertainty and volatility in the market. At this juncture, let's have a quick look at the charts and see what the state of play is for today. What we have on screen is the German DAX. Um, as mentioned previously, um, with the GDP figures coming out as as expected, at minus zero point one percent, we didn't really see that great um, much of a move um, today. It's it's widely known that the German economy has been under pressure for some time, so nothing really significant there. But what is interesting uh, is to note that um, the Bundesbank President Jens Weidmann did state. Um, is actually opposed to the, uh, the to the asset purchase program that is currently uh, undertaken um, that is currently being uh, being provided through the through the ECB. Um, he does he states um, that it'd be wrong to just carry on um, with that uh, program just for the sake of doing doing so. He's also um, made statements with regards to speculating over interest rate cuts or, or more quantitative easing as um, he doesn't see that that actually does provide any sort of, there is no justification for that for, for, the, euro, for the euro area. And um, it, we've also got other economies, um, other governors also supporting this view that he has. And one of them is the uh, Finnish governor, Oli Ren, who has called for a package of measures that actually beat expectation, and the Slovakian um, uh, governor Peter Kazimir has also said that a broad consensus is needed to ensure the ECB's uh, credibility. So we are seeing that they are they are looking at perhaps other measures as opposed to just the quantitative ease and aspect to help bring about strength in in the very weak uh, uh, euro euro area. Um, he did also state that the, um, the there was also reports that the governing council also seems minded to add monetary stimulus uh, next month, um, and 
Draghi did say in his statement in June that there would be a need to act if the economy didn't improve. And obviously since then, we've also seen um, output factory output numbers drop. We've seen orders decline, uh, and we've also seen that confidence, consumer confidence pl uh, plummet as well. And with the continued uh, trade tensions between the US and China, that is adding further uh, uh, concerns and, and um, overall outlook remains rather, rather bleak. And then we, when we also combine that with the fact that the, the UK is obviously approaching um, the deadline, which is the 31st of August, and it's, it's looking ever so likely that they will exit the EU without a Brexit, uh, or with a no Brexit deal that then adds further uh, complications uh, to the whole affair. And then obviously we've also got the Italian uh, uh, government um, in, in a state of political uh, um, turmoil at the moment. So there are a lot of things to weigh, um, weighing on the, the um, Euro, uh, for the Eurozone, not just uh, from an economic uh, perspective, but a, uh, a political perspective. And then the general global economy um, is obviously having uh, it, it, it's an impact on 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 the on the um, in the euro area as well. Um, looking at that, uh, looking at the charts as a result, um, there really isn't any, any uh, potential trade setup in my view. I would just be looking for uh, um, looking to add short any sort of temporary temporary rally. So if we do get prizes to come and test um, the highs here at eleven thousand eight forty six. That would be a potential opportunity to still go short. Um, my bias still remains uh, negative, um, um, remains bearish on, on the DAX. Um, if you want to be a bit more conservative, you can actually wait for price to break out below this trend line and then uh, proceed to take shorts on the, on the DAX. Um, gold rem still remains um, my preferred instrument to trade, um, particularly uh, due to the um, uncertainties that are still present in the market we didn't really see that much movement um, since from yesterday this from a, 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 apart from that move from when it went to 15 um, 1555 10 and then got all to the low of 15 25 55 uh, sorry 25 uh, yeah 15 25 25 uh, 15 25 so therefore um, not until we actually actually pull further down would I be looking for uh, for buy opportunities. I think at this point we, that consolidation does give us um, the view that the market can actually move um, in any any direction at the moment. So if I just highlight that particular area, I'll take this one away. So that particular area of consolidation it, it remains a concern for me. So if we do get price to break out of that consolidation then potentially uh, we could actually come back down to 1500 alternatively if it doesn't uh, if we do see it break to the upside then potentially we could see it come to as high as uh, 146885 uh, so at the moment there there really isn't that much of a, of, of a trade setup in my view on gold but I would rather trade gold uh, to the long side um, than, to the sh than to the short side. So any sort of pullbacks with a bullish close on an intraday time frame would be uh, something uh, of interest uh, to, uh, for today's trading. Um, other things that, to, we, we, that would obviously add to um, today's market, uh, today's trading, would be the sort of news that we've received uh, from yesterday um, till today. Um, we've, we've seen that uh, China and the US uh, uh, are looking for conditions to uh, resume trade talks, which will be positive. So that in itself will potentially uh, be a catalyst in today's trading if we do, if we do not get any further headlines which, uh, say, which um, speak to the contrary. We also had reports today that the um, U.S. Uh, threats to impose tariffs on French wine, on wine is receding, um, and that is that will be 
obviously perceived as being very positive and this is just um, in response to uh, the French tax on digital companies such as Google and Apple um, um, and the fact that they are looking to uh, remove that tariff or, or the threat of it will definitely be perceived as being very positive uh, for, for, for the market in general. So any sort of news that comes out that shies away or detracts from the political tensions uh, across the globe will, will definitely bode well for the markets, at, at least for today's trading. Um, that will bring us to the end of today's uh, market commentary. Uh, please do take a moment once again to review the disclaimer on screen. If you would like to discuss any of the matters raised, uh, you can do so by contacting us via the medium show on screen. And my colleagues and I would more than delight to assist with any queries that you may have. I'd like to take a moment to thank you for your time and we wish you the very best in your trading and investing decisions. All the very best. Take care.